It's autumn pruning today on Pots and Trials, so join me for a wander around the garden to see what to do. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. One of the things I'm often asked at this time of the year is whether you should give roses an autumn prune. Some people say not to, some do. I'm very much a firm believer that yes, they should be given an autumn prune and, and I like to do it towards the end of October. Um, these roses, this is a, a David Austin rose here, this has been flowering since June in the garden. On and off, it's a repeat flower as long as you deadhead it. And it will try and keep flowering. As we can see right up at the top there, there are still a few buds forming but the weather's wet we're starting to get frosts and the flowers as you can see on this one even when they do open they go all horrible because of the damp air so they, they look horrible on the plant so the reason I like to give them an autumn prune at this time of the year is for two reasons one is it makes the plant go into its winter dormancy it's been working for us all summer long it deserves a rest so giving it a half prune now just makes it slow down and stop producing flowers but the other reason is if they get tall like this stem here they can blow around in the winter and that growth can be damaged the roots can loosen so it's really for the benefit of the rose I'm doing it and it might mean forfeiting the odd late flower but I think it's worth doing so what would you do with a rose like this well we've already been deadheading it as you can see as we've gone round, or Jill has so I'm going to basically take it down by about half and that's a good general rule for shrub rose for hybrid teas and multiflora roses just take them down by about half this is just a, a halfway prune we're going to do the rest of the pruning the proper pruning if you like in March so all I'm going to do is try and cut to a bud it's just good practice to always cut to a bud but I'm just taking off some of these stems there just above a leaf and it's just a case of snipping them down like that so go round all over so it, it's a tidy up exercise really to reduce the height and stop that wind rock. What it won't do now is to produce more growth. This real tall one, I'm gonna take down to a similar height as these. So it looks a bit drastic, but that is all coming out as well. And I'm just gonna work my way around this rose bush, taking all of those down. So that's tidied it up. It's still got growth on there. The other thing to look for, any damaged branches, I've just noticed this one here, that's obviously been caught, probably molly running through the border or something. As you can see, it's torn just there. We don't want to leave a jagged edge like that. So again, I'm just gonna prune that off to get rid of that damaged piece like that. That's just a point where disease would get into it. So just throw those down there. And then the other thing to do, as the season goes on, we can see that this later on in the season got a bit of black spot on it. And as these leaves fall off, then what I tend to do with them is try and pick them off the ground or pick a few off the plant. These won't go in the compost heap. These are going in the dustbin. It all helps with that fight against diseases next year so any diseased leaves like that it's worth just picking them off working your way around just to tidy the whole thing up and then in a matter of weeks time as we get more frost the rest of the leaves will go and we can collect them so that's how you deal with sort of bush or shrub roses we're just going to pop round to the front and i'll show you what you can do with climbing roses With climbing roses is a similar principle. The aim is to shorten some of the growth and just keep it back to the wall a little bit more. And this is a climber that we've got on this stone wall here. It's one called New Dawn. And it's one of my favorites. It's got a very pale pink. In fact, at this time of day, they're almost white with just a hint of pink. So there's still one or two old flowers on there, which are now starting to go over. And there is, believe it or not, the odd bud still on it. But again, it's that time of the year when I think we need to put it to bed for winter. So it's very simple. It is going across the plant here I've got it tied back fanned out in a in a sort of very informal fashion and it's just a case of shortening the growths back and then again what we can do in March we can do the more severe proper prune on there and if we need to cut some of the old wood out we can do that then to encourage some of the new growth so it is really a tidying up job and just holding it back to the wall a little bit so that all this growth doesn't 
blow around too much in the winter and cause any damage to itself so it's really just a nice thing to do just go around you can't go wrong with it and as i said we're going to prune this again in march so if you think you've not taken enough off or too much at this stage it's not really a problem because we can rectify all of that when we give it a proper prune so it's a case of working away along and that already is just making it look a little bit neater and i'm not going to worry about it blowing around it's also worth just checking i've got this tied back to support wires on the wall and i noticed this branch here this quite big branch has got itself in a bit of a pickle it's that's gone behind and is damaging it so i'm going to prune that one off back to a bud but it's come off the wire the little tires broken so that would potentially blow around and cause a lot of damage so i'm just going to tie that back to the wall just put my secateurs there I'm just going to stick a loop of this around the wire pull that back into position and then just tie that there so again it just holds it nice and firmly over the winter time uh, and that's this stretchy string so it gives a little bit as well um, and then i can take off that little dead bit that's rubbing and then shorten these back as the others and it just holds everything firmly into place so it's a job that you can be doing now, but we've got one more bit of pruning to do on the back and I'll show you that next. Finally, I just thought we'd have a look at this buddleia because there's a bit of debate, two schools of thought as to whether you should prune them in the autumn or not. Traditionally, yes, you would give them a half prune, similar to what I just did with the roses. For the same reason, they can get very tall and they can blow around in the wind and it loosens the roots. So you would cut them down to about half now and then give them a harder prune in March time. But the other school of thought is leave them because at the end of these stems here where the old flowers were, there are thousands and thousands of seeds which will fall to the ground and seed eating birds will feast on those over the winter so it's actually beneficial to leave it for wildlife so i've made the decision with this one to leave it we've got loads of birds in the garden and i love to see them this one isn't too tall uh, not too wide and this isn't going to blow around much and cause any damage so i'm going to leave it and hold back and prune it in march but if this were a giant that were 10 feet tall and 10 feet wide and it were blowing all over the place then i would probably do a little bit of pruning on it then so it's your decision but for now this one's got a reprieve and it's going to be bird food through the winter Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials and don't forget, keep telling all your friends about us and get them to like and follow our pages. Next week, we're going to be catching up with a few jobs in the fruit and veg garden. So we'll see you then. <laughs>